Hi fellow camera geeks, Half here and welcome back. Colour grading log footage can be notoriously tricky. So in this video I'm going to show you how I approach it and how I go from this to this. If you like that track you can get it own it yourself and use it on your footage. It's part of my royalty free music packs and they're linked below. And just before we jump into this video, I'd say if you haven't seen my five S-Log tips video, it's so worth a watch and I'll link that below as well. I'm gonna start with this super easy landscape, really realistic grading example. And then later on, I'll do some more involved versions, including my main studio shot, so you can see exactly what I do with that. Still, here we go. We're going for hyper-realism. Let's get into it. So this is by far the easiest way to get a simple, quick, and quite realistic looking grade on S-Log2 footage. Seeing as I've used S-Log2, the first thing I do on almost every single grade is to bring the exposure down slightly, and I'll do that by adding my color wheels. It's usually the first plugin I use on every single grade. Next, I'm just gonna add a lookup table, and all I'm going to use is the utility lookup table, which is the S-Log2 to Rec709 lookup table, which uh, I've used before and I will link below if you're interested. It's totally free. Um, I forget what the website's called. It'll be linked below. As you can see, this adds all of the contrast you would need, plus a very true looking color palette. So as I do with most lookup tables, I'll be dialing back the mix just a little bit so it's slightly less intense and I can dial in exactly the amount of saturation and contrast that I actually need. Just a few more tweaks to my general exposure level and I'm pretty pretty much where I want to be. So there we have the first example. It is far from cinematic looking, but if you just need a really rough and ready quick grade to get things looking, you know, really good and punchy, this is the easiest, quickest solution. Next, we're looking at a clip from my video about how to light a subject for high key, which if you're interested, I will link below. And this one will be kicked up a notch in difficulty, so pay attention, there's some good tips coming. Just a quick note with this one, it was actually shot in S-Log3, so I have overexposed the shot quite a lot so that I can make use of the maximum dynamic range and get the cleanest looking footage. So once again, the first thing I'll need to do is to open up my color wheels and correct for that overexposure, so I'll bring the overall exposure down. I then want to separate the highlights and midtones quite a bit because what I'm trying to do is essentially almost blow out the background. Usually I wouldn't be so enthusiastic with my highlight and midtone boosts and cuts, but for this example it really worked. I then just made a small adjustment to the shadows and I just brought up my saturation just a little bit. I might have to revisit this after I've applied my lookup table. The last thing I'm going to do here is actually to desaturate my highlights just a little bit to keep that background looking more white. Next I want to sort of massage the footage to get it looking as good as it can be, bring out as much detail as I can, and I'm going to use curves, and you guys know I love using curves. If you haven't seen my video all about how to use curves, um, it's definitely worth a watch and I'll link it below. So as you can see, I've added a lot of control points and that's really the key with curves in my opinion. Adding lots of control points gives you lots of control. You're not just adding a simple S curve to add contrast. As I mentioned in my curves video, be really, really careful if you're using 8-bit footage. If you're too enthusiastic with your curve moves, you will really notice uh, things like banding and you'll see the codec fall apart quite quickly, so just be really, really delicate. Next, I'm going to add a lookup table so that I can tell the colours what they should be doing. And for this example, I want something a bit more stylized, and I'm going to use the Velicor Aspen lookup table, which is just probably my favourite lookup table of all time. Uh, it's linked below, you should definitely check them out. So I've dialed back the lookup table just a bit so it's a bit more subtle and this immediately looks a little bit more washed out so I really want to make a few more adjustments in my colour wheels just to adjust for that kind of look. And now this is in the ballpark of what I was hoping to get. I think it just needs a little bit more colour so I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit more saturation to the overall look just to get some extra warmth into the skin tones. The final thing I'm going to do, just the icing on the cake, is to add just a tiny bit of sharpening and definitely always try and be subtle with this. 
The reason I'm using it in this case is because I've actually used a, it's a very sharp lens, it's a Sigma 50mm f1.4, um, it's very sharp but I've actually used really really shallow depth of field so I just want to accentuate where the focus is which is actually just on her eyelashes. So just a tiny bit of sharpening really draws you into her eyes and you know draws your focus. So that's my example of grading for high key, hopefully you picked up some tips from that. Next we're going to have a look at my main studio shot which is the most involved, let's get into it. So here's the before and after of our final grading example and this is by far the most involved but I'm sure by the end of this you'll get a really good idea of how I do things and hopefully you'll take some tips away with you and you'll find it helpful. So this is another S-Log2 example so of course we need to bring our exposure down to correct for the fact that it was overexposed just a little bit. I'm then going to use curves and of course as before I'm going to add lots of control points so I have lots of control and with this example I'm going to pay a lot more attention to the shadows than I did in the previous example. The reason for this is because this shot is a lot more cosy, there are more shadow areas. There aren't going to be so many highlight areas so I really don't need to pay so much attention to them. Once again I'm massaging the curves so that I can get really good detail in the shadows. I'm also paying very close attention to my skin tones to make sure they're looking good as well. When I adjust the highlights, really the only thing it's affecting in the shot are the fairy lights behind me and the light to camera left. So I want these to pop, so why not give the highlights a big boost as it's not affecting anything else in the scene. Next I'm going to add a lookup table and get my colours looking really good and again I'm going to be using my Velicor Aspen, one of my favourites. As ever I prefer it slightly dialed back so that it's a little bit more subtle. And then all I need to do is just add a little bit of saturation and the colour is pretty much where I'd like it to be. And I'll just add the finishing touches to this grade. I'm going to add the Skin Smoother plugin, uh, which you know I like. I'm just going to copy it in from a previous grade because it takes quite a long time to set up. You can see all the settings I've used here. Um, not that it will really help you because you'll really need to tailor this to your grade. And as you can see, I've got a really good isolation of the skin tones. So it's only really affecting my skin tones and just a little bit of the light uh, to camera left. And the last thing I've done is just to add a tiny, tiny bit of sharpening. It just adds that slight crispness that I like. And really, this is the order in which I add my plugins. Color wheels first to make exposure and saturation changes. Color curves next to add contrast changes. My lookup table to get the colors to where I want them to be. The Skin Smoother plugin to add that finishing touch to my skin tones. And then just a tiny touch of sharpening. And that is it. For me it's important to have these plugins in this order because one plugin feeds into the next and you get a very different result if you have them in a different order. And that's it for now, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Let's have a little colour grading log 5. And um, I've, I've made a huge amount of videos like this, so I'll pop a couple of particularly good ones on this side for you and if you fancy sticking around a little longer and you're not subscribed, definitely do it. Hit the blob on this side and until next time let's help each other out and shoot a bit of video. See you guys. Yeah.